welcome to part 10 of a build. In this episode we will be finishing the boat. Might not get as far as fitting the outboard but we'll get everything else done. So we put the two halves together in the last episode and uh, it fits very nicely. It's, um, I went over it with compound so there's shit all over it. But yeah the two halves fit together really nice. In a few strategic places I've just put in countersunk nuts and bolts um, which will get covered up with the edging strip. That's the next thing we do, fit the edging strip. Uh, the only place where it doesn't line up very nicely is down underneath here. So I don't know if that's going to show. So it's got a good gap all the way round apart from this bit so something obviously went wrong with my plug making so I'm going to fill that gap up with fibreglass um, that stuff up there the uh, chop strand mat in resin to make that nice and strong because it's too big a gap to fill with the sealant and I've got this edging strip to go round. So it's sorry, trying to get it to focus. That cross section with a little lip to go underneath the uh, flange, and then there's a strip that goes in there, which is red stuff. So it should match all the boat. So yeah, really pleased how the two halves fit together, apart from that one front bit. But uh, that's okay, we can sort that out. So I'll get on with fitting that strip. So I'm going to be riveting it on. And I have some nice fancy stainless steel rivets, uh, which is a good point. Every, all the fixing I've been using have been 316 stainless. If you use normal stainless, that's 304 stainless then it will actually rust if it goes in salt water so everyone has to be it all has to be 316 it's also called A2 stainless so you get A2 and A4 A4 will rust, A2 won't I've got that bit done as well so some of this rubber squishy edging it only just fitted over the uh, profile of the fiberglass so next time maybe I'll try and lay it up a bit thinner in here and got this Lamborghini style engine cover or fuel tank cover to go on there so that's going to be hinged back here and then I've got these strap things which will hold it down I've also designed some pretty cool 3D printed vents that go on here, sort of again Lamborghini style, and I've copied the Lamborghini mesh. And I haven't got the seats yet, but I've found the pair I like. They're expensive, but they look uh, they look really cool and they fit. Everything else I was looking at was was because it needs quite a small bucket seat. It, I think boats look silly if you have like a big tall bucket seat sticking out loads, so they're quite low backed. And, uh, and I think I'll get them in tan leather, so they uh, go nicely with the red. So, these are the 3D printed air vents. Which are going to go on something like that. I've also made templates, which have the whole locations in them. So I can put it over, find the centre and hole saw that hole out and my hole saw is a bit bigger than this so that will cover up the uh, join, not join, edge of a hole. Then I've got some nice anodised cap bolts to go in here which are aluminium so they'll be a bit weak but this isn't heavy. I could have used stainless steel ones and painted them black but the chances are the paint would chip off and it would look rubbish so I got the expensive ones 
So this, this is 3D printed and it only cost, it's probably about two or three pounds in filament. And actually the anodized fixings are about a pound each, so the fixings cost more than the molding. Okay. Something like that, and another one matching on the other side. It'd look cool. And this will just mean um, there's good air circulation into where the fuel tank goes. Also, this engine cover. See, it's got those little vents in there. Which draws up through there, and then by Venturi will suck the fumes out through there, hopefully. So now I'll just set the camera up and uh, start fixing the edge strip on. Got all the plywood cut out now. So nice, nice little wind deflector side bits with the uh, holes drilled in them. See the Raymarine sat nav in there, and a digital rev counter, and got the transom cut out as well. And I've started putting the steering in. That's the hole underneath the rev counter. That's the hole for the steering. And 
the reason I've lifted it up and bisected the rev counter is because otherwise the steering wheel would be down close to your knees and I want it to feel just right so I've sort of been sitting in it to try and work out where it should be. The only issue is this cover plate steering off thingy obviously wants to go about there. I could have squeezed it in like that but then the steering would have, would have been too low. So what I'm going to do is copy this in CAD and 3D print it with a semi-circle cut out of it, that'd be fine. So you can see the rev counter nicely. I don't want to just cut this because it would look pants. So uh, I'll 3D print a copy with the semi-circle cut out of the top. Should look good. Raymarine sat now is pretty cool. So all of this is going to be varnished, but these side trims will have leather over them. And the same with this red bit in the top of the dashboard matching the seats. Uh, I've ordered the seats. I'll uh, put up a little picture of them now. These are really cool. They're handmade in England by a company called Intertrim. And they make, have a look at their website because they make some really cool stuff. And uh, they're in, I think the colour's called Fawn. So it's the typical Ferrari leather cover, leather colour with red stitching, that nice diamond pattern and the logo at the top. So they should look good. And they're supplying me with a bit of a leather extra so I can cover those extra bits in the interior. So the engine cover all cut out and transom. So the next stage is I've got to take this all apart now and start varnishing these bits up. Um, the seats are going to be a little while, they're going to be at least a month, but I can still take it out and test it with no seats in it, that's not a problem. I've got red carpet to go inside as well. So we'll varnish up all of these. I'll start off, I'm using really expensive, nice Epiphanes varnish. With a first coat, I'll dilute 50-50 with a white spirit, just so it soaks in nice and deep. Everything's all varnished now um, with the 50-50 varnish and white spirit. So it's not shiny yet because that stuff just soaks right in and helps seal up and protect the wood. Um, it's already gone quite a bit darker and uh, it's quite a nice pattern on this hardwood plywood. It'll get even darker as I put on coats of the proper varnish, get really shiny and I think that's going to come up looking really nice. I stacked the other bits over here and uh, where this, I think that looks really nice, where, the, where I've radius the corner and you can see the laminations of the plywood. It's a really cool effect. So I hope to get quite a lot more than this done in this video, but uh, things always take longer than you expect. So uh, thanks very much for watching guys. Please um, like the video and uh, remember to subscribe to the channel. That's a big help to me. Uh, next time, hopefully be finishing it all up and getting that outboard on. I also need to get my hands on a trailer, which is going to be expensive before I can put the outboard on. I don't want to, I think with that on it'll be too much weight for my little wooden trolley. But yeah, hopefully next time we'll get it finished off and ready to go into the water, maybe take it out for a little test. Should be cool, without the seats, but 
that's not too much of a problem so yeah once again please please uh subscribe to the channel thanks for watching and i'll uh, see you later bye